This is Dumb Down Life number six. Right, and uh, we'll go straight into number one, which is Doug's story. So it says here. Oh, we're going to launch straight into that, are we? Yeah, uh, why not? Okay, here we go. Now, <laughs> I'm just going to read you the first line of this story, because I think that'll pretty much give you the gist. It says, a woman who ripped off her ex-boyfriend's testicles with her bare hands has been sent to prison. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> with her bare <laughs> hands. Now... Uh, have you have you read the rest of that story though, Doug? Yes, I have. Do you know Where, what she did when she ripped it off? Uh, no, carry on. <laughs> she put it in her mouth and chewed it. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> but the thing was that the guy explained that the the girl grabbed hold of his underwear, pulled very hard, using his words, and ended up with his nuts in her hand, uh, uh -huh. leaving him totally naked. It's like. Whoa, 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 hang on. Is, is, is he married to the She-Hulk or what? <laughs> is he married to the She-Hulk? What was he doing in just his underwear in the first place? Further down, the, the, I think one of his friends ends up hitting her on the back of the head to make <laughs> her spit it out. And <laughs> then she gives it back to him. And She's trying to choke it, that's why she spit it out. But hang on, why was his friend there in the first place? Why was his friend there <laughs> while he's in his underpants with the <laughs> She-Hulk? <laughs> around in his boxes. Can, can I ask a question? Go yeah, on, did, they get it, did they get it on film? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hang on, it's on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Remember the extreme friends thing <laughs> about the other week? <laughs> Dude, that was gnarly. The worst part is his friend handed it back to him saying, that's yours. <laughs> <laughs> that was right. Yeah. I believe this is yours. He's belong to you. <laughs> Forget about the uh, inquest into, you know, how Heath Ledger died and, and, and what really happened in Diana's. I want to know how on earth this, this <laughs> whole thing happened. How did he end up in his, in his underwear? How did she actually... They need to do some scientific tests on this. No, but okay, guy... Apparently, the, the gentleman involved rejected her advances uh, at the end of a house party. Now, I'm not quite sure what kind of house party that was. But... <laughs> this is a swingers party, isn't it? You can yeah, see absolutely. it coming out, can't you? <laughs> she flew into a rage, apparently. So not only can she rip bollocks off, but she can fly as well. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. I mean, she must have had some nasty the strength. If she's got the strength to do that, then she's probably a really big girl. Um, You'd imagine and I'm you not hope so. Yeah, I'm not surprised he refused the advances. <laughs> well, this is where the science needs to come on. We need to have like um, some of these weights and measures things where they, they, they pull on a little barometer thing to see whether how much pressure is actually needed to pull one off. Are you volunteering? <laughs> I'm not volunteering for that particular... I'd volunteer, <laughs> I'd volunteer to pull. <laughs> As long as there was a blindfold. <laughs> Sticking out a tooth. Tie your net to a piece of string and then tie it around the door handle and slam the door. Yeah, I'll leave that one to you, Doug. <laughs> do, you never, do you remember that with teeth when you were a kid? Did your parents ever do that for you? No, they took me to the dentist. <laughs> really? Oh, it was a common way in our house. When you had a really loose tooth that was going to come out anyway, you didn't need to go to the dentist. You just tie well, a piece like... of string around it, tie it to a door and slam the door. Fair enough. Would you stand in the doorway as the door slammed? Or... <laughs> stand directly in front of the door, you mean? Whack! Oh, yeah. I course, didn't, didn't realise all those teeth were loose, but there you go. Course, Can you imagine how much pain this guy must have been in? Absolutely. No. <laughs> no, I oh, can't. I can. No, not at all. <laughs> he brought tears to his eyes. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> but, uh... Good God. So anyway, she's been jailed. I'm not sure how... Hang on a second. Let me see how long she's been jailed for. <laughs> As you can see, we don't have one of those things where if you have a nice long pause, it cuts in with some music. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be me. 
She's jailed for two and a half years. Two and a half that's, years? That's pretty fair for ripping it's a just over, it's just, I'll say it's just over a year of bollock then, is it? No, she only took one off. Oh, so she took one off? Five, she ripped both of them off. <laughs> 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 Right now, where the hell did you find that story? BBC, <laughs> I think it's on the BBC News website. Yeah, really? Yeah, yeah. How did I miss that one? <laughs> <laughs> it was under the medical tab. You probably don't do, go there very often. <laughs> I get as high as the technology thing and just don't go any further. No. <laughs> okay, and um, <laughs> on that note, oh, <laughs> quite a the, fitting title for the song, really, isn't it? <laughs> was it? <laughs> Yeah, this is, <laughs> this is Black Lab with Without You. Okay, we've had some uh, feedback from last week's show. Um, Ken from um, Derby 
responded to the conversation about uh, fanboys and um, Microsoft and Windows. And Darren, I think you actually know Ken from Derby, don't you? I'm familiar with that gentleman, yes. That would be my dad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, once or twice. So he only replies to the song to the um, to the show that I'm not in. Oh, that's not. <laughs> what does that tell you? Sure. <laughs> um, basically, the, the the just to recap on the the story last week, it was it was all about um, fanboys um, and and sort of um, advocates of certain brands being completely biased and sort of almost blinkered, isn't it? That's it, yeah. Um, and and y- your dad sort of said a lot of it's to do with your experience with um, certain brands. In that, um, if you buy a washing machine, uh, you've, you've say a uh, Zanussi, um, that will become your choice, and you'd say, "Oh, they're great," because you, you have a Zanussi washing machine. It lasts for fifteen years. When that breaks down, you go out and buy a Hot Point, and it only lasts for two years. Then where are you going to go? You know, that your um, opinion is, is skewed. Even though you probably only had one washing machine of each, your opinion is entirely skewed. Somebody else might have had the completely opposite um, opinion. I, I'd, I'd agree with that to a point. And, and certainly I think um, that used to be the case. But nowadays, if my fridge downstairs broke... Um, I'd probably go to the internet and start looking at reviews of other fridges. And <laughs> well, no, this is the thing. It used to be the only experience you got and the only feedback you got was exactly who you'd spoken to. And you know, I, I'd speak to me dad and say, he'd say, "Oh yes, have a have a Zanussi because I've had mine for ages." Sales rep, exactly. do you ever trust the sales rep? That's exactly the point that your dad makes further on in his comment, actually. That, oh, is it a that, bit longer? I'm sorry, Dad. Yeah, oh, it goes on and on and on, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, he, he sort of says that um, he'd take your opinion or possibly even my opinion on what computer to buy um, over the guy next door. Mm. And, but a lot of your... Uh, recommendations do come from the guy next door or guys at work you know you have to mention you're looking for a new washing machine oh yeah I've had my hot point for 10 years and it's never been a problem so you go out and buy it and it lasts you 6 months and it breaks down Yeah. Um, so uh, yeah thanks for that Ken yes thank you very much so Lance what was the name of that song we just listened to Oh, that was. Did you <laughs> say it? You did yes it was uh, Black Lab and Without You yeah, so that was pretty good. I quite like that. I thought you might. Not too girly for you. No, no, not too girly at all. And do you have a URL for the Black Lab song that's all there? Um, I don't at the moment. I, I will find it and put it in the show notes for you. But the other thing is you can find a lot of Black Lab stuff on the um, Podshow Music Network, which is music.podshow.com. And if you want to leave some feedback... Dad, you're more than welcome to leave another one. <laughs> you can send an email to ddl.podshow at googlemail.com or you can visit the website, which is ddl.podshow.com or you can call us on 0207 1932 982. Um, we've also added, that for this um, episode onwards, we've got something called a Twitter um, if you go to twitter.com and sign up, what this allows you to do is to actually get um, like an instant message um, every time we put up a new show or that we've got something that um, we think our listeners might be interested in. And the Twitter name is Dumbed Down Life, all one word with no spaces. And I say that's one way of getting instant information about the show. I'm glad you've explained what that is now, because I keep seeing it on Lance's live journal, and I have no idea what it is. Yeah, well, it's it's a way... They actually tie the system in with mobile phones. So if you wanted to, if you're crazy enough, you could actually have um, all of these little notes that Lance and I and, and everybody else puts together sent direct to your mobile phone. It does oh, tend to mean that it's buzzing and vibrating all the time, telling you... <laughs> you imagine. Yeah, I've just had a cup of coffee. Great. Thanks very much. <laughs> but um, Good to know that. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I, it does make you feel a little bit like a stalker when um, you're getting these messages from women on the other side of the world saying, I've just woken up this morning. Great. Thank you. <laughs> well, that's nice. It's always good when you wake up in the morning. Exactly, yeah. I, I didn't wake up this morning. 
Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like. Uh, excuse me a minute. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's um, kind of like the instant messaging version of blogging, isn't it? Yeah. Yep. Instant messaging version of blogging with um, SMS text built in. So they're very short. I think it's a maximum of 140 characters. It's uh, one standard SMS, isn't it? Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, for my homework this week, I've um, been putting together an interview with... Um, one of the staff from Flying Labs. Um, this company has released a game this week called Pirates of the Burning Sea. And this is a multiplayer online game. And here is my interview. I'm speaking to Denicia here from um, Flying Labs Software. Flying Labs Software this week actually released a game called Pirates of the Burning Sea. It's a multiplayer uh, online role-playing game. And uh, Denicia works with the... Well, let, let's start from there. Where is it you work with, Denicia? Um, I work on the community team, so I work for uh, the community director. I'm the forum specialist is my official title, so I spend uh, the majority of my day trolling the forums, uh, helping out people, um, looking out for stuff that shouldn't be there. Yeah. And, so you're uh, a moderator sort of role as well, are you? That's correct. Yeah. I hang out in IRC, help out people there, um, and every once in a while I end up at a convention um, where we do demos of the game and talk to the fans and do fan meetups. So it's a lot of different things uh, that I get to do. But the main thing I do is troll the forums. You can't miss me. Right. The company's called Flying Lab Software, and they're... I personally haven't I haven't heard of them. Uh, I was in the, the games industry for quite some time. Um, what have they done previously that, that people might be aware of or, or might know? Well, Flying Labs um, itself um, is a very small development firm in Seattle, and uh, the game title that they have, uh, and you, which I believe you can still find on GameSpy, is called Rails Across America. Okay. And um, but they haven't done a big thing. However, uh, the people involved at Flying Labs, uh, like the senior animator, uh, came from EverQuest. Right. Um, you know. Uh, our CEO came from Microsoft Golf. I mean, we've got a lot of gaming and development experience. Uh, the artists, yeah. yeah, everybody's people have worked on all kinds of games out there. So everybody has a lot of, of you know, all types of video game experience. The content writers, um, you know, you can go out there and we've got people that you can actually buy, go out there on the shelf right now and get books. You know, from Jessel Bow, you can get books from Corey Herndon, you know. So we've got some great writers that write the content and the storylines. So can you tell us a little bit about the game itself? Right. The game is set in 1720 Caribbean, or Caribbean, however <laughs> you may pronounce it, much like Privateer and Privateer. Privateer, yep. <laughs> um, to me, it's Privateer, <laughs> and uh, coming from my, my ye old uh, nautical background. And uh, at any rate, you get to play one of essentially four nations, uh, which is uh, British, uh, Spanish, French, and Pirate. In our game, Pirate is its own nation, as it were. It's a brotherhood, yeah. and so you all, the Pirates can work together. So you have these four nations, and then you have a lot of NPC factions, um, which is going to matter when it comes into um, the economy, especially um, in dealing with the NPCs and uh, as example, the Dutch are an NPC um, faction or nation. Yeah. And the reason why is a lot of people say, well, what about the Dutch? Because they were huge in the Caribbean. And, and I know because I used to live in the Caribbean. But the, at the time period, they had pretty much just had trade. They yeah. weren't really fighting for control at that point. Yeah. So uh, if you sink a lot of Dutch ships, then that's going to affect your um, – rating for the Dutch ports. So if you try to go in there and you do trading, it's going to be very difficult for you to do so. And uh, so you really have to think about, especially if you want to do any sort of uh, work in the economy, is to think about the NPCs that you're kicking their butts. So, so when you say it's going to be difficult, does this mean that the, perhaps they're not going to give you the same options as they would do if you had a, a higher rating with the Dutch? 
um, there's going to be like taxes. Plus, right. you know, if if you kill a lot of Dutch, the Dutch are going to want to kill you on sight. Right. Okay. So, <laughs> so there's a lot of different things like that, and which could be really difficult because um, in the Antilles, with uh, a lot of the uh, the cities there, is that. When unrest is created for PvP, you get these red zones. These We call them the red circles. And there's no crying in the red circles. Um, if you sail into one and you get sunk and lose everything, too bad. Okay. And as from a Care Bear stance, I and I think this is great because I can choose not to engage in PvP. Yeah. And that being said... I have never enjoyed PvP as much as I have in a game as I have. Even when I'm sinking to the bottom of the sea, I'm having a great time. <laughs> now, so, the, the PvP, is this um, character to character or ship to ship or crew to it's crew? It's all ha- ship to ship. Okay. Yeah, so essentially um, you have two different types of combat is or sort of three. that it's it's kind of, And the third is all kind of involved. Is that you have avatar combat and then you have ship combat. The ship combat is the biggest thing of the game that's what you're going to be doing the most is the ship combat and the uh i mean it's it's just amazing whether it's npc you know you're doing pve or pvp either way it's just phenomenal cam music flowing can cannons firing and yelling and screaming it's great um, what you can do is that if you you can demass somebody you can come up and you can board over right. and so you can have boarding uh, boarding combat, and so when you you board into uh, a little mini instance with, you know, it doesn't matter if it's PvP or PVE. Um, either way, is that you have you and you have your boarding party that came with you, and then you have your combat. And so if it's PVE, it's not so bad. You have it. What board, the nice thing about boarding is that you get a chance for more loot. Yeah. So if you can, um, boarding is good. The hard part about boarding is if you have other, we'll just say for the PVE environment, the player versus environment, is that if you've taken on one ship and there's still two other NPC ships, they're still firing at you. Right. <laughs> so it's, it's really good. If you have one that you really want to board, is demast it, get away from it, and then take on the other two, you know, or at least sink one of the other yeah. ones and uh, make sure you've got your uh, focus on uh, repairing your sails and, and things like that, repairing your hull. You can put your crew together while you take a boarding party over to uh, beat that captain. And um, So there's a lot of juggling to do there to make sure that… There is, there yeah. is. That's, that's interesting. And, and yeah, so, so you so have the, the, the different nations. One, yeah. So, yeah, you're, you're not at war, so but uh, but you are fighting for control of the ports. And that's the whole thing about the PvP and why it's really neat about the nations is that it's not for personal glory. It's for nation glory, is that you want your nation to win control of the ports. Right. And so having your foot in the door there, is, are we likely to run across a, an NPC somewhere with your name? I haven't yet found myself. <laughs> I don't know if I'm actually in there or not. Um, but uh, that would be kind of cool, you know. So if anybody ever asks you for any feedback, it's like, hey, why is Danny not in the game? Exactly, yeah. Why is Danny not in the game? Yeah, in a full I'd definitely game, be yeah. a, I'd be a saucy NPC for sure. <laughs> now, the, the January 22nd release date, I take it, is that purely U.S.-based servers at the moment? Nope, that's, um, that's uh, the U.S.-Europe um European Union release. Excellent. So it's, yep, you'll be able to buy it in the store. So you can just walk in, buy it off the shelf. Um, the box is going to have really neat stuff. You've got like cards that give you controls. There's control stuff on there. Um, you've got, it's all on DVD. So if you like to have a oh, box, it's, it's a really nice. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it's not that, CDs, it's DVD. Absolutely. One thing that has always bugged me is that they, they still produce games on four or five CDs. And it's like, why do they do this? But yeah, DVD, that's fantastic. Good. Yeah, yeah, it's it's all on the DVD. I haven't actually seen the retail box myself, um, but some folks uh, got a copy um, the other day. And so th- we've had a lot of fans that have received theirs from Amazon.com. Um, in, in different places, and they're just blown away by the art. Um, Sony really did a good job packaging this and uh, doing it up really well, better than we expected. So it is phenomenal. So if, if you, I'd recommend the box if you're the kind of person that likes to have the box and the, all the goodies that are absolutely. inside. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Um, but you can also see the retail pre-order links for Best Buy, GoGamer.com, which I highly recommend. 
uh, GameStop, Amazon.com, or the digital downloads from Station Store and Direct to Drive. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for um, sparing your time to speak to us about this, Danny. It sounds like a fantastic game. <laughs> Um, oh well, thanks for having me because I could talk about it forever. Well, I've got I've got one more uh, one more thing for you. Yeah. In, in case anybody wants to just casual chat about the game, you can come to our IRC channel, which is on Coldfront. Um, so the server is uh, irc.coldfront.net, and the channel is Burning Sea. Burning. And you can come in and and we we have developers that hang out there, and, and we have a really nice time, and it's a good place to ask questions of, of the game if you don't feel like sorting through all the forums for information. Well, thank you very much for joining us, and uh, I hope to speak to you again soon. All right. Have a good one. Thank you. Right. Well, that was a that was a good experience interviewing somebody. That that made a, a real change. Um, well, that's great. I mean, that was a great interview. That, that was, was easy. Yeah. The, 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 on good the job, Darren. Good job. Danny was such an easy person to interview. Um, she actually sort of ended up answering a lot of questions before I'd even asked them. So I'm going through just reading my notes as to what I'm going to ask, just crossing them through. Um, the, the the actual recordings that I got from that was almost an hour's worth of recording, and it is. It's almost heartbreaking to take some of the stuff out of there, um, <laughs> but it's cut down to the the, the, the ten minutes. Um, but the game sounds pretty good. I'm the game for- sounds fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there was a lot of acronyms used in that interview, and oh, yeah. I didn't. <laughs> yeah, three letter three letter acronyms. I didn't pick Danny up on it at the time because I, I'm also in gaming mode, so I, I just understood a lot of what she was saying but what we'll do is we'll put the acronyms into the show notes um so that those of you that, that couldn't idea. quite follow it can <laughs> then um get an idea of what's going on that'll be me i can't read music either <laughs> <laughs> i can't play music either according to lance but there you go <laughs> I, I've, I've never said that in my life but, uh, but, yeah. maybe i have yeah <laughs> yeah once or twice uh, although you are a better guitar player than you are a singer which is lucky. I've got to be good at something. <laughs> Your subject now, then, Lance? Oh, it is. Yes. Sorry. Um, That's right. I'm actually feeling quite inadequate now because after a story about tearing off scrotums and uh, that interview, all I've got is a story about a little microbe. <laughs> 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 is it a friendly um, microbe or, a, it, or is it's, it it's a far mic- from a friendly microbe Doug and I'm hoping you can jump in and explain a little bit more because you know a hell of a lot about this Ebola oh Ebola yeah Ebola yeah you, would you like to explain what Ebola is okay e- Ebola is a hemorrhagic fever that uh, emerged out of the African jungles uh, I think as early as the 60s um, and by hemorrhagic fever Fever, it means it makes you bleed. It makes you bleed on the outside and it makes you bleed on the inside. Uh, and essentially it works by uh, the virus gets into one of your cells and starts replicating and continues replicating until that cell ruptures. Uh, and it continues to do this all over your body and it has a 90% kill rate. So it's a pretty nasty disease. Right. Thank you very Thank much, you. sir. Right. Um, there's a, a, a lab in America that's created a safe version of Ebola. Oh, yeah, yeah. I saw about this. That was fantastic. Yeah. Um, What they've done, apparently, just taking one single gene from the virus stops it replicating. Now, the the advantage of this is that it makes it an awful lot easier to study it because um, it's uh, a biosecurity level four which means that there's not many science labs in the world that are capable of doing any sort of research on it. Um, yeah, those, those places are pretty creepy too. You've got the yeah. guys in the big suits and their, their negative pressure suits so that the air always blows outwards if there's a puncture. And That's so, it, that's exactly it, yeah. Um, now, with, Andromeda with Strange with, Stuff. <laughs> sorry, say that again? Andromeda Strange Stuff. Do you remember that movie, The Andromeda Strange? Vaguely, yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it's that, that kind of thing. So um, having a, a, a copy of the virus that doesn't replicate means that um, hopefully other labs will be able to do research on it because it's less uh, virulent. 
um, that they don't need so many precautions because you've got the wooden single, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Wooden single piece of Ebola. What's the word? Help me out, somebody. Um, I'm, I'm being... I'm, um, what I'm, word being is <laughs> I'm being very quiet here because all I know about the Ebola was that it, it was quite a big thing and everyone's going to die of it, like the bird flu, um, back sort of in the, in the late 90s. Uh, and at this time, I went to go see Billy Connolly. And um, <laughs> he said that he, he couldn't actually understand how it was that we couldn't study and find this virus because this is a flesh-eating virus, right? So once this virus has eaten an entire man, it must be man-sized. You go, look, there it is! <laughs> <laughs> not very scientific at all, if they, so that's why, that's why I've been sitting here I quiet. Think, I think the thing with Ebola is that although it is quite deadly, um, correct me if I'm wrong here, Doug, it, it um, kind of burns itself oh, out fairly sure. quickly. <laughs> Say that again, sorry? I'm sorry, I spoke over the top of you. <laughs> I, I said, um, although it is quite deadly, it does tend to burn itself out fairly quick. Yeah, I mean, absolutely, because it's so voracious. Um, out in Africa, you have lots of these little villages. So what it tends to do is it tends to sweep recklessly through the entire village um, and then not really have anywhere to go and not have the chance to have anywhere to go because it's killed everybody. Um, so, yeah, they tend to flare up and then burn out. So, so typically what would they do there? Would they then sort of cordon off that village and pretty much let it take its course and then it's, it's fairly safe? Uh, well, I mean, the CDC go in, um, and quite possibly people from uh, USAMRID, which is the American uh, military virus research place and medical research place. Is this um, the outbreak, guys? Say again? Is this the outbreak, guys? Um, That's right, yeah, um, absolutely. When, whenever I think of um, Ebola, I, I think of it, is it Dustin Hoffman, was it? That's right, and um, blah, 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 blah. the woman that plays Lorna or whatever in um, Lethal Weapon, I can't think of her name. No, me either. Uh, but, um, yeah, that's that's the kind of the people that you're on about, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And they'll come in. And, I mean, they, they're there for research, of course, but they're also there to do what they can for the people that either have it or the people that aren't yet infected, you know? Yeah. I'm almost, I'm almost some, people just, it. some people just get over it, and, you know, they, they tend to try and use the bone marrow and the blood samples from those people to find out how they beat it. I'm yeah. almost afraid to ask, Doug, but how is it that you do know so much about it? Uh, I tell you how about it. I first heard about it in a, a magazine I used to get called uh, The X Factor, which was a magazine collection that was released around the time that The X Files was popular. And it had all kinds, you know, Bigfoot, UFOs, all that kind of stuff. So it, nothing um, to do with Simon Cowell then? <laughs> Simon Cowell. Yeah, um, they, they, they talk about four things, four viruses a week, and you vote one off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> American virus. <laughs> Every day song. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, what was I saying? I've lost Sorry, my train. Yeah, you, you were looking at this X Factor vi um, magazine. Oh, that's right. So I discovered about it in there. Uh, then I got hold of a book called The Hot Zone by a guy. I, I can't remember his name. I'll have to look him up. Um, but it's a book about uh, the only outbreak of Ebola in the US that occurred. And I think it was in the 80s. Um, and basically, this, this Ebola outbreak happened at a place called the Reston Monkey Institute in Washington. <clears throat> uh, and the book's all about that. And it also talks about the outbreaks in places like Kitwit, which is in Zaire in Africa. Um, and it just goes through in details exactly what happens, what Ebola does, what it is, and uh, all these outbreaks and how they dealt with them. And uh, it's a pretty terrifying book, really. It's, uh, it certainly unsettles you when you read it. Yeah, not, a, not something to read just before you go to bed, then. No, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> or, or go off to Africa. Oh, exactly, yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, the benefits, if they, can, if they can work on it in regular laboratories and it's not so dangerous, then, I mean, that's, there's huge benefits there because well, at the moment there's no cure for it. So. And, I mean, it, n not least, I guess, would be a, a, a financial issue as well, wouldn't it? Because I guess booking time with these um, hyper-secure labs must be quite expensive. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and and if, if it's sort of government-run testing or, or um, uh, experiments, then surely it would be better for the taxpayer to, to be going into a cheaper uh, facility. Yeah. yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Although um, we all know what happens when you cut, cut costs and go into cheaper. <laughs> 
Okay. Well, the next song that we have is... Well, you've written it down as being Brian Bucket, but the actual MP3 suggests that it's Brain Bucket. Which kind of sounds a little bit better. Brian Bucket. (laughs) (laughs) Brian Bucket. It's Brain Bucket with Rocket Science. Here it is. Go on. Here we go. Fantastic. That was Brain Bucket and a song called Rocket Science, and you can find that song at... Oh, wait, hang on, we've lost it. Where is it at? It's at music.podshow.com. Uh, moving on, finally, our contact details again. Our email is... ddl.podshow at googlemail.com. And the website is, Lance? ddl.podshow.com. And our telephone number is 0207-1932-982. And that's uh, what's your username, anybody? It's dumbed down life, all one word, no spaces. And you can find that at twitter.com. There you go. And that's it for today.
Yeah, someone else was supposed to jump in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I think, yeah, okay. Thank you for listening, and here's the end music. Bye. Bye. Mm.